The thing that distinguishes anthropology from its neighboring fields is that anthropologists take seriously the whole range of human societies, um, the whole range of different kinds of conditions under which people live. Most of the social scientists tend to concentrate pretty heavily on modern Western societies. Um, anthropologists do a lot of work in modern Western societies, but they also always have in mind that there's a bigger, wider world out there, and that a lot of the common sense that we bring to problems is the product of a very particular kind of society, a very particular kind of historical trajectory. So anthropologists think about the long historical horizon. We think about the fact that human beings have been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, they think also about how, how broad and complex the world is, so that not everyone in the world is a middle-class American who speaks English. Um, and we want people to take that seriously as they enter into the intellectual pursuit of a science of human society. Well, it's, it's an old discipline. It's an old 19th century discipline in some ways. Um, and so it never really grew up as part of the social sciences, you know, where you have the economists who study the economy and political scientists study politics. And uh, anthropology studies all of that. We study economy and politics and society. And we, uh, we, we never really accepted that modern fragmentation of knowledge. And instead of sort of accepting that, oh, well, this, this field over here, which has a box around it, and there's this field over here, and I have to choose, if you start with the problem and you start to see what are the tools I need to solve this problem. And this is something Stanford is great at, is people stepping outside of those boxes and figuring out, actually, what I'm going to need to do is to cross some of those line, lines and do something that's a little different from what people have done in the past in order to be able to solve my problem. I think anthropology as a field is quite open to that. It's, it's a field that's constantly remaking itself, that's constantly questioning its, its, its own history, um, and that is, is a kind of boundary crossing practice in itself. Uh, a student of mine some years back um, came in determined to be a pre-med and to go to medical school. And that's what his family wanted, and he had a kind of family history of that, and he was very good at it. Um, but he also discovered anthropology, and he got into anthropology, and he was really captivated by it, and, he, and it was what he was really most excited about. And he ended up doing an honors thesis on, um, on soccer, on, on f football clubs in Brazil and in, uh, in Britain. And he was interested in the politics of it. He was interested in neoliberalism. He was interested in what does it mean for private owners to take over public clubs and all the sort of struggles around that and so on. And so he felt quite schizophrenic, pulled in two directions. You know, he had the medical stuff and he had the anthropology stuff. And, um, and he ended up excelling in anthropology, but going to medical school. And off he went to Harvard Medical School. Um, well, a couple of years later, he came back. and He said, you know, he's still very interested in medicine. But he'd been more and more thinking about the ways that the medical problems that people face, especially in the developing world, can't be understood without understanding the political and economic context within which all these diseases and all this suffering happen. And he wanted to think about that in ways that he wasn't really able to do in medical school. So he came back and he said, let's talk about medical anthropology. And sure enough, he entered into a program in medical anthropology, and he's now about ready to graduate and is doing fantastic work on, um, on disease and illness and suffering and uh, humanitarianism in Uganda. And he's going to go on and do great things, I think, both in medicine and in anthropology. So it's, an, it's a nice example of how you, you keep your mind open and you kind of allow yourself to, to be pulled in certain directions. You allow yourself to be excited by things, even if you think they're not quite what, what, uh, where, where your future lies. And you may end up being surprised. I, th I think one of the interesting things about these different fields is that they don't just deal with different subject matters and different methodologies and so on. They draw different kinds of people. They attract to different kinds of personality types. and so. You know, you might look at anthropology and sociology, for instance, and say they have a lot of overlap in terms of subject matter, um, even in terms of method. Um, but they do tend to appeal to different sorts of people. And it's, it's hard to put your finger on what that difference is. But when you, when you find yourself in a field that really speaks to you, and you find that you're, you're among your own kind, uh, th there's a kind of a immediate response that you get. I think anthropologists tend to be, um, tend to be willing to be critical of their own society. They tend to be willing to engage um, people who are different from themselves. They're often people who are eager to, to get outside of what they're familiar with, um, open to travel. Often they've had travel experiences in the past that have been formative. Um, they're likely to be uh, curious about um, cultural difference, uh, eager to learn new languages, um, that sort of thing. And I think. 
um, th there's a kind of outgoingness that comes with the field orientation of anthropology. So many anthropologists get into it because they've either been participated in or they want to participate in some sort of field research project. Um, and you have to be outgoing to do that. You have to be willing to go in, outside of your, your zone of comfort and to, to um, you know, go and put yourself among strangers and to strike up new relationships. And that's not for everybody. Anthropologists often rely on ethnography as a method for learning about people and places. Ethnography is where you go and you live with a group of people, you learn their language, you immerse yourself in their way of life. So it's a very first-hand embodied kind of, uh, kind of knowledge. Many of our students go on to do honors theses or senior papers where they will do that kind of research themselves. They'll have the opportunity to pursue an ethnographic research project on their own. If that's something that's exciting to you, if you like the idea of really getting out there and in a first-hand way diving into another way of life or learning about some group of people and how they live, then anthropology is a very exciting thing. If you see yourself more doing work in libraries or working with data sets and so on, then maybe there are other disciplines that are more compelling for you. But th that's one of the areas where anthropology provides a, a distinctive and, and quite different kind of undergraduate experience. I think that's right. I think anthropologists don't want to abstract away from all the interesting detail and variation and so on to get at something simple underneath. They tend to want to say, no, we want to get at that complexity. We want to understand it. That's where the interesting stuff is. Uh, so there's definitely uh, a an, an willingness to uh, accept that the world is complicated.